All right, everybody. Mario here with TCG Portal. We've got Gregory Titov here, uh, second place player at our locals at Black Knight Games tonight. You're playing um, Mono Green Elves? Plus, Green White Elves. Sorry, elves. Green Elves. Green White Kage Elves. All right, sir, you have the floor. All right. So, let's start with the actual main deck first. So, big shocker, I have four of the Moonbreeze Elf because, hey, turn one Mad Dork is good. Now, the bench of the five, you can, you know, play a Nugget attack with it. Four of Elf, Elf Priest because, again, turn one Mad Dwarfs are horrifying. Especially when you can go into my three of Wall of Wind right off the bat. Just turn one, play a stone, play a one drop. Having that mana for, for Wall of Wind can actually like, make your opponent really kind of fear doing anything in that turn. Help me out a couple times. After that, we have a bit more of a spell base. In three of Zeke's for kind of any like any sort of like target removal on your dudes or any sort of like resonators they have you care about. And four of Seal of Wind and Light because it is a really good counter spell and just it answers things when you need to. I've never actually like had the Awakening thing be relevant besides like just wanting to get two counters in my Kagia before, but eh, it'll probably happen at some point when I play another green deck. After that, we have some pretty key elves. First up, we have four of Christy, Warden of Sanctuary, making your other elves just not touchable. Uh, they need to deal with her first is pretty horrifying. And the second ability comes up a lot more than you think. Being a bit, bit of a control deck, you can kind of dirtle a bit more, and her being able to basically make you gain more life and draw two cards a pop is pretty horrifying, oddly enough. Then we have a very just underrated one, Guide of Heaven times four. The tap ability is not the worst thing. Having a few spells in the deck kind of makes it a little watered down, but most of the time you still tap, you play it on a turn, rest it, find an elf, you're good there. And just being able to like pay three for her and just like tutor an elf is pretty horrifying at the right time. Oddly enough, a lot of the time I find myself just getting another mana dwarf with her awakening thing, just playing it, also having mana for like another cast spell on my opponent's turn. Then we have four kind of fodder elves, honestly. Melfi is just a solid two draw for elves, it's an elf. I can use it to get more actual will if I need to. Uh, four four, so it dies to thunder, but honestly I find a lot of times it just kind of takes a bullet for another elf that people I really think should be killing instead. I can cope with them taking out Melfi. Also, it helps with like more fodder for foment. This card is absolutely silly in that you gain eight, and you get to like just get rid of any cards that aren't relevant at the time to find things that are, are relevant, like let's say counter spells. Or, if you need them, little feast things. She is still a really horrifyingly strong card. She's an elf, which is very nice. Six Sages, which is relevant for another card we'll talk about in a bit. And again, the Enter is just really good. 5-7, good body, mana dork. There's literally no downside to her besides the fact that she costs mana. But that kind of happened in this game. Then we have four of Fina the Silver Player. Because now we're using Kaguya, I used to use Christy as the main ruler. We don't get the second. We don't get the first ability to like remove their their swiftness and stuff. But plus four plus four for each other elf is pretty horrifying. I've had it just like okay, play Christy swinging for game more than once or twice. I mean, feet, sorry. Then in the main we only have one sprint because in general as a control deck, I find myself just able to dirtle till I find it or just swing in with like one or two feet is out and it's just enough. Then the last cards in the main deck we have are four big feet sing. It's a large body that blocks most things you would ever need to in this kind of format. It blocks much everything that your opponent will be attacking with in a rush deck and lives, besides, say, an Athena that's buffed up a lot. But that's like more than. It isn't just turn three, they, tur they drop into Athena, swing in, and kill it. On top of that, this mixed with little feet sing, you get a lot of like counter for actually like little walls of wind, which can really add up. Especially if you're playing multiples, because that's just silly as all heck. And for the stone deck, we get kind of a simple layout. We have three basic wind stones, because we only need so many of the actual other stones. Four of the Moon Breeze Memoria, because the task for white, green, or moon, all of which are, all of which are relevant at different times. The moon specifically for like having Kaguya and flipping Kaguya. The white for the actual counter spell. Yeah. Then we have one of Little Red, because it's really silly, all of our things are green. It's kind of a no-brainer. One of Feasting, because it is a stone that can stop spells. I don't need to see anything else. Then we have one of Stone of Gusting Skies, because hey, one more source of white which can be relevant, makes green. Don't leave it too open to split, I mean like we're kinda like not the best deck against split, but we have counter spells, so we kinda live through it, luckily. After that, we have the sideboard, which is kind of a mixed bag today. First off, being green, we have two of Portal of Truth. It's a silly removal spell that I used to take out a lot of key fairies earlier against one in one matchup. It won me that game. 
In case we do need to like get the heck in really quickly, we have two sprints in the board. It's, it's kind of like, you don't always want sprint, but when you do play sprint, it is an absolutely horrifying thing to have. That's why I, like, I, I try to keep two in the board just in case I'm in that kind of matchup where it will let me like swap, like swap whatever they have off and keep going at them. Then we have one rat at Tosker because in general, I played the deck with like two rats in the main at first. It's a really nice thing because you the bit more like control element that you can play any resonator you want anytime. But at the same time, you only really need that like extra flexibility of some like on certain matchups. Like playing as an aggro deck, you don't need to like play a turn one little artvark first. He kind of just slows down stuff and is kind of substandard chump blocker. Then we have one of Death Scythe in case, hey, rulers that we want to deal with that are going to be coming in fast. Two Elvish Bowmen because additions are silly. And we're elves. This is an elf. It, it, it works. It's an elf. Then we have Mary Bell. It's good against any regalia heavy decks that we really need to like, pop a regalia to slow them the heck down with. Two file forfeits that are honestly just kind of a catch-all card in case there's some sort of some sort of thing that I've kind of forgotten. I'm honestly, I've not started these in even once, but it's the kind of thing where I expect to want to use them at some point. Like maybe against a Val two deck to slow them down for that turn. After that, we get to the spicier parts of the board. First, we have Christy. She is the main elf ruler that I've used before. She's really nice. Unfortunately, I was wrong about her second ability. I can't just like start off with seven cards from on the draw, but. Being able to like flip and pop any actual thing you need to, like say a Shahrazad that's holding back all your elves, uh, whatever ruler they have, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm, I'm surprised like so few people actually like, use her ever. Like elves is strong and she's really strong too. Then we have the tree package: one of Avatar Alice, one of Excalibur, one of Yggdrasil. I'm honestly not sure when I want to swap to this yet. I was considering it twice earlier today, but I've not actually gotten there. I'm expecting maybe if I'm against some sort of red matchup, it just kind of makes them a really awkward thing for them. It kind of like weakens me a little bit in the fact that like my stone base does have a few dead stones then, like in Moonbreeze Memorial, I can't tap for green. But at the same time, just being able to like, toss in like just these two alone. I won't be too like surprised by that being a good idea at some point. And yeah, looking at the ruler, Kaguya herself, she is a very silly little girl. You get to like just can cancel any actual like automatic abilities they have. That can really be a gross thing. <coughs> like how many of your how many of your cast did I cancel earlier earlier tomorrow? Um, I think you canceled at least five or six in one game. It was pretty fun. Fun times for all. Being able to kind of just have her as an infinite blocker, just like block bubble to like block any sort of large thing. I was facing down a behemoth earlier. She was kind of like pretty good then. And the awakening is. Actually, stupid. Like I, in the fact that it doesn't actually, like, it does not actually like tap down their stones or t or untap your resonators. I didn't. I wasn't too impressed with it on paper, but it has won me at least three games tonight. In the fact that you just get to like, okay, this turn you get to do literally nothing, and now I get to swing in for enough on the next turn to press you down, or just like swing in and block and like wipe up, wipe up all your resonators. And you got Womble Combo, right? You, uh, God's Heart, tap everything down, untap your lands, play, um, what's it called? Uh, like, quick cast anything, pretty much. No, I know, but your, uh, your pump spell. Yeah, Sprint works, right? Sprint works. You play Sprint yeah. after that and swing in for a billion. Yeah, it does that. It's a really just versatile ruler. It has a lot of power to it. Plus, for just three, I've, I have had it where, like, okay, turn one elf, then turn one ramp elf. Turn two, ramp elf, ramp elf, turn three, flip, and just hold them off from doing anything forever. Yep. It's a really just versatile little ruler, and I'm glad that you made it. As strong as it is. Not about to the fact that like it lives through flames. That's relevant. That is relevant. Like so yeah, right. Kagi Elves. Awesome. Fun. Well there you have it guys. We've got uh, Mr. Gregory Tifa in the second place elves. This is Mario with the portal. If you like the video, like the deck, give us a like, and subscribe, and comment as well. Until next time, guys. Later. Hey guys, be sure to check out GrinningRemnant.com, where you can find my videos and many other cool articles on everything Force of Will. And I'd like to thank Black Knight Games for holding these Force of Will tournaments. They are located in Hamilton, Ontario. Great place for all your card game, board game, and miniature needs. Great staff, and lots of room. If you're ever in the area, be sure to check them out for things like FNMs and pre-releases 
or just stop on by to take a look around. Links are in the description below. This is Mario with TCG Portal, and I'll see you guys in the next video.